With the release of Season 7 onto the MCC, it brings us another set of seasonal challenges. So in this video, I'm going to give you the tips and tricks on how to grind your way to earn your seasonal timed content the most effective way possible. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Now with a new season brings a new set of challenges for us guys to jump in and play in the MCC. And just like previous seasons, we have timed content tied directly to challenges for this season, which you'll only have about eight weeks or so to grind for. The three bits of timed content being Evocati's Edge, which is a new white sword customization for Halo 3. We have the Nightcrawler undersuit as well. We have the Pixel Perfect Battle Rifle skin for Halo 4. So if you guys like these tips and tricks type of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, well, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So let's start off with the Elite Sword play. This earns you the Evocati's Edge, which is a white version of the sword within Halo 3's customization. To get this challenge completed, you actually have to complete two challenges, which is the Nice Slice and Keep Killer challenges. For the Nice Slice challenge, you have to earn 343 points with an energy sword where campaign kills on heroic or harder are worth one and Spartan kills in multiplayer are worth 10. Now for this one, I would suggest to play most likely infection on PVP side of things. As obviously once you become infected within that mode, you have a sword on hand, you can slash your way to the end of the challenge. And so if you get roughly 10 sword kills every match, which most likely you might get more with an infection, you complete this challenge within about 30 to 40 games or so, depending on your skill level. Now, if you want to do the campaign side of things, obviously you want to focus on missions that have the Flood and the Covenant based kind of campaign missions, but those are only worth one point per sword kill. So one, you have to find a sword, and then two, make sure you slice enough baddies with that said sword. So there's just a little bit of inconsistencies there. I think I'll just actually just play infection most likely to grind out this challenge this next challenge is keep killer is kill 500 high ranking elites in campaign or spartan up missions on normal or harder now i was thinking okay well spartan up has like kind of a firefight like experience so there's probably a lot more elites that you come across compared to campaign not so much. Now this thread posted way back in February of 2013 for Halo 4 counts the amount of enemies are in Spartan Ops. And after looking through this entire list, they don't really peak much more than like 20, maybe 40, if you're lucky on a mission for the amount of elites that are in here. Most likely it'd be kind of around like the 15 to 20 range, which is super low. Compared to this forum post on Halo Waypoint back in October of 22nd, 2014, counts out different enemies. Like he didn't even finish out this entire list, but there's two missions in particular I'm gonna point out. On Salt on the control room, he counted 80 elites. Now obviously this is not an official exact number, but definitely tells you there's a lot more elites within campaign missions than there ever are in Spartan Ops. Outskirts from Halo 2 has 71 elites. Now this list isn't even finished throughout the entire series, but just in those first two games that he reviewed, there were clearly more elites within the campaign missions compared to Spartan Op missions. So definitely want to jump in and play your campaign missions within the season to try to get the keep killer one. Now, I would just probably combine that with a weekly challenge because usually every week there's like a featured game that if you play a campaign missions within that specific game, earns you weekly challenges as well. So just team it up for whatever the week calls for. Next, we have the Nightcrawler challenge, which is complete the bedtime stories and Caesar dressing challenges to earn the Gen 2 tinted smoke tech suit and the challenge for caesar dressing reads as get 343 assassination kills in campaign you must be on heroic or harder again just team this up with whatever featured game is for the week for the pve campaign missions and just be extra sneaky bedtime stories is complete seven night missions in campaign on heroic or harder and it gives you the list right here of night missions which is really nice to see but some are definitely a lot easier to do than others i would suggest doing Kikowani Station from ODST or Floodgate from Halo 3 as these are pretty easy speedrun missions like I do them myself and I don't really speedrun and you can complete them under 10 minutes guaranteed if not around 5 minutes. I've left links to the legendary speedrunner Naked Eli who gives you some great tips of how to do these speedrun tactics. Again, link in the description down below. Last challenge that's connected with some seasonal timed content is the Pixel Perfect Challenge where you complete the Brain Burst and 
Quattro King challenges to earn the Pixel Battle Rifle skin. And the Brain Burst challenge has earned 500 headshots in match made games. Definitely the easiest one to do this in is SWAT. So just play SWAT in whatever featured PvP game is for the week. So for example, for this week, we have the Shared DNA, which is complete match made games in Halo 4 or Halo 2 Anniversary. So play SWAT in either one of those modes and you'll begin your headshots very easily. And then we have Quattro King, which is win 15 ranked match made games in Halo 4. This is the challenge you might want to actually do first out of all the seasonal challenges. And the reason why that is, is because when a new season starts, that's when the population kind of gets a nice little boost of more people playing. More people are going to be trying to go for this challenge. And as you get later on throughout the season, less and less people will be trying to grind out the Quadro King challenge. You might see a little spike at the end, but for the most part, it's right when the season starts. And Halo 4, to be honest, is a rather underpopulated ranked mode within the MCC. So playing Quadro King and playing your ranked Halo 4 matches might be the best way to go about doing that. Maybe jumping in with the squad to help out with the matchmaking process. But yeah, Quattro King, if you really care to get that pixel skin, you might want to jump in and play it because it's definitely not going to be part of the exchange for season eight, as we do know there's going to be a delay for each season when it comes to content coming in to the exchange. For the last few challenges, we have the Living on the Edge challenge, which is complete a custom game, earning at least three kills on Edge for just one game. So literally just go into the custom game browser, guys, and just join a match that's on Edge, get at least Three kills, one time, you got this challenge done for 5,000 points and one extra seasonal point. Nifty 50 is literally just play multiplayer games 50 times. Again, just team this with whatever game is featured for the week when it comes to PvE when it comes to PvP challenges, like this week it's Halo 4 and H2A. And the very last one, which gives you 200,000 XP and four seasonal points is complete 30 weekly challenges, which I talk about in my how to rank up fast video for season seven of MCC on how to complete this the most effective way possible. Now, obviously with your weekly challenges, they change, well, every week. So I can't go into too much great detail about this video without making a new one every week. But essentially, they're, most of these are just kind of like just play the game kind of challenges. But generally every week, there is only thing that's one thing is specific and it's like the things I mentioned earlier about specifically featured games that you need to play. So for like this week, for example, it's Halo 4 and Halo 2 Anniversary. But for the PvE side of things, you can see over here that you complete missions in either Halo 3 or Halo 4. And generally there's almost always a firefight challenge every week as well just like this one's pretty standard every week of just getting 50 kills within firefight and with the new match composer for firefight within the mcc this actually might be a little bit more fun to grind out so hopefully this guide helps you out when it comes to getting your seasonal challenges completed if you've been out of the loop for halo for the last few days or so or missed any content from me recently check out the videos on the screen right here i link to all my news and informational videos right there so thank you so much for watching i greatly appreciate it i'll catch you on the next one Peace out.